episode of the You know Web Interview Show. I really should have looked at a video before I did. Yeah, you this. didn't watch any of them. I, didn't watch any of the I knew you probably wouldn't. <laughs> everyone Not watches, that I didn't want everyone watches this show. I'm joined by owner <laughs> totally blue. I'm joined by founder and actor, the basement theater. J Star. He even has shirts. Right, yes. He didn't you know you've made it when you're on a t shirt. That's right. He didn't make me wear this. No. I, I, you know, I, I this. A funny thing, I was flipping through, um, I was at the Goodwill, because yeah. I always go to the Goodwill, and uh, I saw one to of our festival t shirts. Nice. What are you saying? This is for Goodwill. <laughs> Probably is. Uh, uh, but I saw one of our festival t shirts at Goodwill, and I was like, who gave up their t shirt? I was so mad. I was like, Pissed off if I ever see one of these, in uh, the goodwill, I will be so mad. Don't worry, bro. I'm keeping this one <laughs> right. for life. Man, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank this you. is our very first on location oh, episode. Well, we've chosen a brilliant location. I, 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 I believe so. It's so glamorous here. It's so nice. This is a wonderful theater, and you've been you've been doing improv for a long time now. Yeah, uh, uh, like 19 years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Coming up on the 20th anniversary, I guess. So how long has the Basement Theater actually been? 15 years. We just turned uh, 15 on April 1st, 2019. This is 2019. I'm not sure when this is airing or when you're watching. <laughs> People in space who get this, yeah. what, like 30 years from now? I hope it gets up there faster than there. I don't know, man. Yeah. Satellites. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. 15 years old here at the Basement. So, yeah. Pretty cool. It's been a long, long time, huh? Yeah. it's. I mean, it's crazy how, like... Uh, how much has gone on here and like I mean it feels like you know a blink of an eye yeah. but then you go 15 years that's a lot of years you know and I'm always I'm always interested uh, I know you haven't watched any of the show um, which is strange because everyone in the world watches right. the show right. <laughs> I have technical days I'm not yeah. involved I, the, uh, it was a Wi-Fi problem yeah yeah. Um, but I'm always interested in knowing the why behind you know how people get started and what they're doing because this is obviously a work of passion, and love for you. Oh, absolutely, because uh, there's no money in improv. Okay, uh, <laughs> um, merchandise. That's merchandise. What you gotta sell the t-shirts. <laughs> um, uh, it's so weird to me because improv is is it's so yeah dear to me. Like now that I'm in improv, I'm like it's just it's a, and it's the thing that I needed in my life. Yeah. Um, I started out um, <clears throat> not really as an actor, but as an actor. Uh, when I was uh, a child, this is, we're going, we're just going to start back. <laughs> I was 10 years it's old. The beginning of time. We won't go <laughs> that far. <laughs> um, but uh, I just, I was always fascinated by performing and loved yeah. performing. And my grandfather built me a stage wow. in my basement at my house. So I had a little stage that was not... That's what he called your cage. Much bigger, yes, right. <laughs> Beauty and J-Star. Um, <laughs> please trade me for Belle. <laughs> no, he didn't. Um, but I had a little stage, and it was. I'd have two little dressing rooms, and it had five uh, lights. It was a um, wow. track light, um, but I could put little colored bulbs in them and do the lighting. And it had a... Um, had a fluorescent light at the back, and somehow he got these colored pieces of plastic that I would slide in there and make yeah. like the backdrop be a different color. And I just it was just like that a white so thing. Cool, man. And I would put on shows for myself. Wow. Not even like force like my mom to watch them or you know, my, I just did shows in the basement. Um what was, what was the first stuff you were doing? Like what I, did you bas you know what I remember doing all the time is uh singing along uh, or singing uh Liza Minnelli's uh uh, New York, New York with Robert De Niro. <laughs> it's like this weird musical. Uh, <laughs> Pardon me, sir, I've a problem. Lost my glove and I could use your light. Right. Wow. Uh, and it's this whole thing. I would sing both parts, the boy and the girl, where this guy's looking for his glove uh, from the usher and yeah. um, trying to get a date with her. Uh, it was just dumb. It was so, I mean, I loved it. It was so much fun. Um, but I never like considered like acting as like a career. Like I never was like, this is what I want to do when I grow up. Right. And when I was in college, I um, a friend of mine worked for the newspaper, and they were filming something on our campus. And they also had a, um, a studio downtown, um, down, down, down at Lakewood. And she asked if I could drive her to their studios so she could take pictures. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sure. Went down there, and um, I was just hanging out while she was taking pictures. And uh, this crazy, short, blonde-haired woman, just frizzy blonde hair everywhere. Um, I say that like I don't have frizzy blonde hair. Uh, <laughs> I have a different weird, image of myself. <laughs> just so strange. Um, 
Uh, she was like, ah, you're here, you're here. And I'm like, what? Yes, I am here. And she's like, oh, good, thank God, get to wardrobe. I'm like, no, I, th I think I'm not the person you think I am. And uh, she's like, you're my guy, right? You're my guy, my frat guy? <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. She's <laughs> like, come to wardrobe, you're going to be the guy. And she just put me in this movie. Evidently, whatever actor was supposed to do these three lines didn't show up. Holy crap. And so... I was put in wardrobe, very tight wardrobe. Those of you who've seen this film, which I will not say what it is, um, oh, cool. <laughs> no, I was uh, put in these um, like um, surf shorts that were so tight. Um, anyway, I ended up working on this movie for two weeks. Wow! Um, and got paid for it, and it was like this revelation. I was like, oh, you can. You can do the thing yeah. and get paid for it. Yeah. Like it didn't. You don't have to just be in your grandpa's basement. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and not that I don't want to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who does it? That guy's <laughs> place is amazing. Right. Um, <laughs> there's a stage in life. Uh, anyway, so um, I was studying art history and French at at Oglethorpe. Well, at can the I time. ask you about that yeah. real quick? Because is that not just like something that you're just like, holy crap? Did you know at the time when it happened, it was like you know, the universe coming together for you to be like, here, man, you should be doing this. It, yes, it was. It was like, um, I'll say it was more like um, like automatic doors. Yeah. Like all of a sudden these doors just like slid open and I saw this whole like world that I didn't really know existed because yeah. I'd only seen the outside wall and didn't know like how it worked. But I saw, like I hung out with actors who, you know, were, were coming and going and right. being paid and the the, the cast people, the, the, um, all the crew and everything. And I realized, like, all these people do this for a living. Like, I just never yeah. knew that was what was on the other side of a movie. Right. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, I was studying art history and French at Oglethorpe and uh, started looking into to getting into a theater program. I was like, why don't I study this thing that was so fun? Um, and so I got into the theater program at Georgia State and went there to study theater. So art history, French, theater. Now I can... Basically do Moliere plays. That's what I can do. <laughs> um, uh, in French, you're welcome. Uh, uh, it's a huge audience. <clears throat> right. So I started doing, like, when I got into theater school, I was doing musicals and, and plays, and I was like, oh, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is it, you know. And then um, uh, I got cast in a couple of, like, little real roles in TV shows, um, and then uh, I got cast on a um, sketch comedy TV show here in Atlanta, and it was ridiculous, and it was live, uh, and okay. like sometimes we'd be holding scripts, like <laughs> doing the thing. It was yeah. uh, really fun and really terrible. Uh, and then from there, they asked me to host a a, a talk show. Mm -hmm. So I was hosting this talk show <laughs> called the J Star Show. Um, really? Yeah, and it was crazy. And uh, this is how many years uh, this from was, the time you got you like. Fell in into the movie now, part. That was to... probably like when I was uh, when I did the first movie. I was probably ooh, maybe nineteen, uh -huh. nineteen twenty, and then this was probably like twenty four to wow. twenty. Well, maybe twenty. Oh God, I don't know. Maybe I was younger. That's pretty quick. Man. I don't know. It, it happened really fast. It did Magic really Johnson. Fast. It took him a long time. A ton of stuff. He yeah, well, I'm go... still working on my football, um, my football career. <laughs> He's a basketball. Player. I know that. <laughs> 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 I knew it as soon as I. I'm still trying to open my theaters, cinemas, because Dr. Johnson theaters. Cinemas, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> You've got one theater. Yeah, one. I've got the, it's a complex. Um, <laughs> anywho, where were we? Uh, so, I was um, off track. Yeah, so, so I got this, um, I, it was so dumb. I was doing, I was hosting a, a talk show, yeah. and uh, I knew what talk shows looked like. I knew that, like, the host came out and did a um, monologue, and like you would say some funny things about topical stuff, and then you would introduce your guest, and then you would talk to the guest, and blah blah blah. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Yeah. I'd never done a monologue, never written a joke in my life. I didn't write jokes. I would walk out and just talk <laughs> to the cameraman because we didn't have an audience. Wow. Which this is really funny because this is where the improv starts trying to force itself into my life. Yeah. Um. We had this group on called Laughing Matter. So somehow in all this, um, I'm, I met this guy who liked the show. And it was like his mom was best friends with my maid or some weird thing. <laughs> some <strange laughs> so weird. And... But he watched the show and he thought the show was fun and funny. And he um, came to work as our booker. So uh -huh. he would like find the local talent mm -hmm. um, to put on the show. And he got this group, Laughing Matters. Um, 
who is an improv troupe. I heard those words before. Troop and matters and laughing and improv. Um, but I didn't know what they meant all strung together. Uh, and uh, so they come on, and it was really funny because they're in the studio, and um, there's basically like three cameras, and we have our like our, our little set with a sofa and chair. Yeah. And um, there's a there's like a performance space. Um, and they're like, oh, okay, so where does the audience sit? So which way should we perform to? And we're like, oh, we don't have an audience. <laughs> and, like, and, and, and the funny thing was, we also we had three cameras, but two cameramen. Um, so uh, <laughs> you like, just had one that yeah. was just oscillating like a fan, <laughs> yeah, exactly. back and forth. <laughs> Uh, and up and down occasionally. Just, uh, but there were there were like three or four people that would sit in the booth, yeah. like behind a glass wall. Like so, if they laughed, you wouldn't hear it. So there was just no, there was no, no audience. Feedback, like the guys, no like you know, usually didn't um, you know say anything or laugh on the on the headsets on the cameras. Occasionally, we would have like a couple people. I had a fan club, of course. Uh, it was the J Star slash Jim J Bullock fan club that I had to share with Jim J Bullock from uh, Too Close for Comfort. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think we all remember those days. Um, <laughs> uh, and they would sit in the audience a couple times. Like audience, I mean, like we would find a folding chair in the studio. Yeah, and they would sit in there. there. Anyway, so these guys were like, um, well. We we performed with an audience like we get suggestions like oh the cameraman will give you suggestions or whatever <laughs> like so they did it and it was fun but it was like there was nobody there except for me and the two camera guys were laughing at this stuff <laughs> I'm sure like I never watched the stuff like because I would just be horrified to go back and see well it. that's one of the hardest things I mean energies give you crowd right yeah I mean, yeah, yeah it, totally yeah wow, I just said that completely back yeah, yeah. crowds give you energy yeah <laughs> but I, I've noticed and, and props to you because you're one of the Funniest people I've ever met off You're the cuff. Well. It's it, it's really amazing. <laughs> we talk about this a lot. How quick you just like it's like nonstop with how you come up with stuff. Yeah, it's humorous. Yeah, well, it, but it's um, it makes it look easy. And then you're like, you try it. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, not but, so easy. But the thing is, it is the improv, and the improv is the thing that unlocked this thing. Yeah, because I say it all the time. You've heard me say it. Uh, it's not that you don't have the thoughts. Like, right. the thoughts are in your head. It's that we block ourselves from saying it. Yeah. And so when I hear something from the audience, I just say whatever comes to my head. And, you know, yeah. because I've said it, and because it's also in the heads of other people who are blocking it, it's funny. Right. Because they've blocked it. They've judged it as, yeah, that's too weird to say. But then I say it, and then they laugh because I just said this weird thing. Right. Um, and that's the that's the trick to improv. That's the key to improv. Um Anyway, flash forward, uh, I eventually got into stand-up comedy um, after my <laughs> after, you tell after me. I was doing stand-up on TV, of That's course. The way to go. Ridiculous, ridiculous. <laughs> um, uh, I have to say, one time, uh, I, um, there's, a, there's an episode that's so wrong. Uh, just before the, the show, I had to pee, and I ran to the bathroom, and when we were, we were live show, so like you had like, you know, yeah. it wasn't, you know, it couldn't just hold me, but I could not hold it anymore. And I ran to the bathroom, peed, and ran back, and like got behind the big turquoise curtains. Um, we had this ridiculous, like, huge, thick turquoise curtains. <laughs> like, like they were, they were, yeah, they were, they were just so beautiful. Um, <laughs> it was crazy, we, it was crazy. God, I would love to see pictures of that. Um, I know that all the furniture and the curtains from the set ended up, uh, Owned by a drag queen in San Francisco, and that makes me so happy. That's <laughs> like, you know, like the fact that like these cool sofas and chairs ended up in the right place. Um, <laughs> they found their true home. <laughs> right, they were just like on a resting spot for me. I was their adopt. I was their um, adoptive home. You know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I, you know, come out and do my thing and blah blah blah, and then I just see on the monitor like a big spot on my pants. Oh, like, you know, like, and I don't know if I splashed or, I mean, it was probably a piece thing. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was probably a piece. It piece. was just like, I was like, oh my God, this is the beauty of live television. And it was, yeah, live television. Um, and I was interviewing uh, this uh, woman uh, who ended up becoming uh, one of my really good friends. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if we ever like watched the thing, but. She, bonded over that. Yeah, we did, we did. She, yeah. <laughs> but it was funny because she, um, uh, she wore sunglasses on the show because yeah. she, for some reasons, needs to keep her identity secret. She's a restaurant reviewer. Uh, um, uh, and, sunglasses and so she wore sun, big sunglasses, yeah. like big sunglasses. So <laughs> I'm hoping that the sunglasses shaded her image of my pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a big pea spot. Um, anyway, so I 
later went into stand-up comedy, and um, that was super fun. And then, well, let me ask you real yeah. quick about that. Like going up on going up on a live television show, just kind of five minutes off the cuff. Were you doing anything to prepare before, or were you just like <laughs> living your life, doing day-to-day stuff, and then walking up there like? Today was crazy. I saw a dog with sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Some shit> like, <laughs> yeah. How many times did I say that? This has happened so often. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop putting sun- sunglasses on my dog. Um, <laughs> so weird. I saw sunglasses on a dog. <laughs> come here, come here, Mushka. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's weird. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, no, I would just, um, I think, I, I feel like a couple of times I, like, I wrote like on note cards things that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. But I, I, re- I mean, I really never wrote anything, and I didn't know what was going to happen when I walked through the curtain. Yeah. Um, which should have scared the crap out of me. Right. But it didn't, and I think that's like the second like, oh, you're right for improv thing. But of course, I'm not getting this. I'm not processing it right. Right. Um, and then I moved to New York um, when I was 27, and uh, I was doing some acting and I was doing some stand up, and a friend of mine came up to New York to go to the UCB. Um, Two week intensive in the mm-hmm. summer, and every day he would come home and he'd just be like, "Oh my god, we did this, we did zip zap zap, and then we did yes and scenes, and then we did this, and we did questions only." And I was just like, "Uh huh, sounds <laughs> cool." <laughs> and I mean, I had no idea. And then we, I went with him to see a couple of UCB shows, and they were uh, there were a couple of them that were long form and they were bad. And so then I was just still like, ah, <laughs> "Great, I'm glad you're doing this thing." Yeah. Um, I mean. Just so everyone knows, UCB, Upright Citizens Brigade, was started by, uh, um, uh, blah, what's her name? The blonde from Parks and Rec. Oh, uh, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler, thank you very much. Amy Poehler, yeah. The producer off stage, just doing, <laughs> making peas and ends. Amy Poehler. Um, <laughs> are you a former cheerleader? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> are we not supposed to talk about the producer? Okay. There's nobody behind the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't have cameramen. We don't have cameras. <laughs> we don't have cameras. <laughs> we have three men in the room and no cameras. Sort of like sort how of I was those videos, doing my no? oh wait what? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, UCB started by Amy Poehler, uh, Matt Besser. Um, uh, it's one of like the top, uh, you know, highly regarded improv houses in the world. Yeah. Okay, um, they got their start at Improv Olympic in Chicago, uh, and I just I just didn't get it. I didn't get it. And I'd seen whose line it whose line is it anyway yeah. uh, a few times. Um, anyway, flash forward a little bit more. Um, there was a little thing called 9 11. I moved back to Atlanta. Um, actually, I had moved back to Atlanta one month before. Wow. Um, well, the 21st of August, I moved. Uh, yeah. And right. then, yeah, uh, 20 days later or whatever it was. Um, uh, I, well, it should be 27 because I was in rehab and then. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Those uh, days were blurry, right. for sure. Uh, and I know, like, in, in New York, you get used to this thing where just, like, just stuff is just sort of thrown at you. Like, yeah. you just, you walk down the street and there's always, like, a gallery opening or some kind of, like, launch party or right. something's happening. And you just... Become you just, numb to it almost. Right? Yeah. But in Atlanta, you have to make your fun. You have to find, like, you have to get in the, the vein of it. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to take a class and, like, meet some people and get back into the Atlanta groove. Yeah. And uh, so I just, I Google was new. Um, and I put in like, um, I mean, this is 2001, uh, I put in like, I think comedy acting class yeah. and um, Laughing Matters came up okay. and I was like, oh, they were on my show like five years ago. Oh, wow. It's Kismet. I yeah. will take their class. And it was taught by Tommy Futch. And the first night, I may cry, the first night I just knew. I was like, this is what I've been looking for the whole time and then that's the moment where it was just like you know like the angels were singing like oh um you know so once i'd gone in the department store uh uh, then i found the department that i needed which was improv because it was acting um it was comedy it was drama it was um it was collaborative you know um that was the part that i didn't like about stand-up is that it was sort of like you just trying to like your story to the to the people um uh I was different in the fact that I did try to encom- in, in, you know, encompass the the people in the audience into my act and like yeah. I you you know, talked the to them and tried to instead of just like telling stories at them, yeah. I was just you know 
talking with them. Right. So, but um, you think this comes from years of being in the basement by yourself? Like, probably. <laughs> you know, I'm just so, so happy somebody else is in the room. <laughs> with someone like, here. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! Oh yeah. <laughs> Probably, I think you've hit it. That is probably it. That is probably exactly why I am always so grateful for the audience and they're like what it does for me on stage. Like you said, like you know, the the energy comes from them. Yeah. Um, uh, because if there's nobody there, there's no like if I fuck up, who cares, right? It's, yeah, it, it takes away the danger. Like yeah. you can, you know, let me. Danger I, makes it. Yeah. Sometimes. And um, and the people love watching because they know you're on a tightrope and they they know and even when you do make mistakes. Uh, mistakes, whatever that means in improv, uh, the audience laughs because they know, they're reminded yeah. of the stakes. They're reminded, oh yeah, this isn't scripted. They aren't doing this from a rehearsed sketch and when something comes off as like, you know, yeah. whatever, weird or not funny or whatever, they're like, oh yeah, they are working without a net and yeah. they don't have a script and they're just making this stuff up. So it makes all the other stuff that much better. What's like some of the funniest things you see from movies or outtakes or like with it where people break from SNL? It's like mm-hmm. when there's that human element of, oh, these people aren't perfect. Yeah. They screw up big time. It is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. When you, yeah. And, and there's been a few, a few times on stage where I've just, I've <laughs> cracked myself up or somebody else has cracked me up. Um, it's just, uh, and that's the moment that I love most. First most, I love cracking myself up because I really know that I'm free yeah. and I'm, letting whatever come out of my mouth and when whatever comes out of my mouth surprises me yeah. then I really know I'm in the moment yeah. um, second is when somebody on the stage says something that's just so funny <laughs> and I just crack up and I, I'm, I'm really interested in knowing this because like I said you're somebody who's just always got something have you ever drawn a blank on stage have you ever just been like, uh, <laughs> oh my like the moment's been too big ever no I mean um, <laughs> no I'm <laughs> perfect always uh, never screwed. there's there's, um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, there's definitely moments, like, so we play this game called Song Title Sing, where you're supposed yeah. to break into song and sing real songs uh, that are appropriate for the scene whenever they're appropriate for the scene. Yeah. And uh, I felt like I played it with Stacy Saturday night, and in one of the shows, I sang like four songs where she sang like 27. Okay. And... I just could not find the songs. I was still fueling the scene and right. able to to give her fodder to sing songs, but I could not find songs in my head for whatever reason. Um, so every once in a while, like things like that, or um, yeah, but I mean, there's always something in the in the yeah. head. I think that uh, yeah, I don't think there's ever been a moment where I've. Is not there anything had you can? To say. Is there anything you do to like get yourself back in that space if you find yourself like, oh crap, like. Uh, yeah, I call it the mantra. Like, if I lose myself in a scene, like, or, or lose myself out of the scene, um, I just uh, will think back to what I said first. And whatever the first thing I said, when the audience member gave the suggestion, and then I said something related to that, that puts me back in the moment of where I was, you know, creative yeah. and where I was thinking properly. Right. Um, so, yeah, I just go back to my mantra, and then I'm right back in it, because okay. I can um, remember all that. Um Family matters. Anyway, family matters. Well, yeah, back to you took a class of family matters. I know. Uh, I'm laughing matters. Way laughing, laughing matters. matters sorry. <laughs> family matters. Mr. Chris, just Steve. Did Rose I Cole. take that class? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. I don't. I did not take <laughs> that class. Didn't take family matters class. <laughs> uh, I didn't have to. You see that brilliant impersonation of <laughs> Urkel? <laughs> Urkel. Yes, I've never seen that show. Um, I've never seen Family Matters, and I mean that's all I know about it. Did I do that? Um, but I know it from other. You're people You're too busy it. living your life on it's TGI true. Friday. It's true. It's <laughs> true. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I took the class from Laughing Matters, and it was amazing. Tommy was amazing. And, I mean, still to this day, like, I remember the lessons, especially, like, we had a, I taught a workshop on um, rhyming the other day, and his his um, uh, teaching to me about rhyming and how to rhyme, and, like, um, you find the prize word first, like, the thing you want to say, uh-huh. uh and then you rhyme that, and you say the the burner rhyme first, okay. and then reveal the prize rhyme, as opposed to the other way around. Like, if you're talking about um, kittens, mm-hmm. you want to say cute. That's the word that you want to say, uh-huh. you know? Um, what rhymes it? Um, snoot, okay? I've got a furry kitten. He's got a tiny snoot. I love my furry kitten. He's so freaking cute. Uh-huh. Like, the other way 
it, it's it's like a downhill thing. If you were yeah. like, I've got a little kitten. He's so furry and cute. That he has a pink nose that is his snoot. Like it just. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. But you just reverse it's it. It's so difficult and when you it's think great. of it the other way. <laughs> P.S. That's going to be available for uh, download on iTunes very soon. <laughs> the, the cute kitten snoop rap. kitten. Yeah, kitten rap. <laughs> All my raps are like, birds, birds, look at those birds. <laughs> that's like what I got, man. Well, I heard that bird is the word, so it is. that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just call me snoot kitten. Snoot kitten. Snoot kitten. All snoot kitten. <laughs> so, I'm going to do a lot of opioids because, you know, <laughs> Snoop Dogg snoot has kitten. the other... <laughs> oh God. Anyway, so I think about that, like those lessons all the time, just like what he taught me. Um, uh, and I took his class over and over and over and over. Uh, his class was six weeks long, uh, and then there would be like a two week break. Yeah. And I just remember every two weeks, just like it was like a drug high. Like I was jonesing for improv. I was like, why can't I? What am I doing? You know, like I need this thing. Just every walking week. up to strangers, like, give me a yeah, suggestion, right? man. <laughs> I need a suggestion, man. Just talk alphabetically. <laughs> come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, so I took all his classes. He created a second level. There were like three of us um, that, that, you know, just yeah. fell in love with him, kept taking it. And um, he created a second level, and we did that a couple times. And then. Uh, he was just like, look, I don't have anything else to teach you. Uh, you have to go. Uh, and so then I rented this space, this space we are sitting in right now in the basement of a Buckhead office building. Yeah. And um, uh, we would just come here on Tuesday nights and rehearse improv. Like we would just come here and do it for ourselves. But just then you just, and a couple other guys. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then there were like people would, uh, we would bring friends and yeah. then they would kind of get into it, you know, and. Um, that's kind of how the basement was born. We just, uh, did you have any thought in your head? Like what you wanted this to be? Absolutely not. You were just like, I want a space to yeah, be all I wanted to and do act and have fun. And- yeah. No, I just rented the, is, I mean, this was an office space with like beige walls and a drop ceiling. Um, there was a sofa in it that was left here from some whatever. Um, yeah. and the space that was beyond that wall, like right where the camera is, there was a wall on the other side. It was like filled with crap and desk and stuff from the previous tenants. We never even went in there because all we wanted to do was rehearse improv. All we wanted to wow. do was like hang out and do improv. And then just one day, it was like our gang style. We were like, hey, gang, why don't we clean out that back room and open a theater? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, okay, let's put on a show. And we did. We cleaned it out and we put 24 folding chairs in there and we built a four by eight stage. Wow. And uh, we had clip lights from Home Depot and uh, a lamp dimmer from, I- a lamp dimmer from Ikea yeah. that um, the guy sat in the front row to do the lights up and down. <laughs> and they just went... Like on or off, like that was it. Um, uh, it was it was a little bit in when we started having colored light bulbs in the uh, yeah. in the Home Depot lights. Um, anyway, we did that uh, for about a year, I think, and then we knocked down the wall and we bought nice like padded chairs um, and we had thirty six chairs and we um, reversed it. This area was our um, bar and ticketing area. Wow! And then like uh, a year later. We, uh, there was still a little wall left kind of over there in that side of the stage, knocked that down, um, rented the space next door to us to make the bar Mm -hmm. and made the whole theater, flopped it this way. And now we have 55 chairs. Um, we had 50 chairs at the moment. We just added five more permanent chairs. (laughs) Every inch. I I wish you could see this space. Um, go to thebasementtheater.com. And you can click and you can see a Google 360 view of the room we're in, like yeah. standing right where the camera is. Uh, you can see how small this place is. And we get every inch Absolutely. of use out of it. Like, um, But it makes for such a magical time. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, so fun to we are, we be are, a part of the show. Um, we are looking for a bigger space, but we don't want to change this part. Like this part, yeah. we like small and intimate. And it's the one thing that like people say, we go to other places um, and it's just too big. Like you, you don't feel... Like here, like the back row is 20 feet away right. and they are included in the show. Like yeah. everything is, it's just very intimate and I love that. I mean, it, and again, it's that energy. They're giving us the energy and you know, if, if they don't feel like they're included, they're not going to be part of the energy. Right. And so they're not going to give us that energy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, so what happened with, uh, the other guys that helped build this? <laughs> where, where are they at? This question will be edited out. <laughs> <They're> like, <okay. laughs> um, some things happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
it was funny. Um, <laughs> uh, I won't go into it, but That's fine. Uh, yeah, it was just it. Um, you just never know, and like uh, several times um, we've been approached to do like a, a reality show yeah. here, like you know behind the improv and blah blah blah. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, I've, I love the idea, but um, uh, this event had happened in our past, yeah. and this guy who thought was my best friend who had helped me open the theater just turned on me, you know, <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. It's like, it's it crazy. was insane. I was just yeah. like, wow. Um, uh, anyway, I felt like that was so huge. I was like, that was all of our drama, all of our reality show wine throwing times are, yeah. are done. Um, but then something else would come along and like, you know, now we have, uh, there's currently 16 people on cast. Wow. We have four tech people. We have, uh, three bartenders, um, and then we have a, a whole cast of like volunteers and stuff that um, you know rotate in and work. So it's a lot of people, and that yeah. makes for a lot of drama. Um, we try to keep it to the minimum, but you know people have personal lives and stuff. Happens How do you do and, that too? I mean, are you rotating these people? Do you do you set like schedules and rotate them for shows and stuff? Yeah, I, um, as artistic director, I still um, I will um, cast people. Basically, send out a um, a, a schedule request form whatever uh and like if you were a cast member you just say uh i'm available these dates and then i look at all the people who are i put it into a big spreadsheet and then depending on who's available for each date i try to make the best cast possible like you know um uh always try to have a girl always try to have like um because uh, we only have three girls on our cast right now. Um, actively looking for girls if you see this and you do improv uh head this way um <laughs> uh i have a wig in there Good. <laughs> you too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because you just want a good balance. And you know, like, there's some people who are um, natural leaders, like yeah. who can just take the stage. Um, usually, I'm sort of in charge if I'm on the stage, and I'll kind of end up hosting it. Right. Um, so there's probably like six or eight of us that can actually do that. Yeah. You know, where it's just really like I can lead this show. I can, you know, yeah. talk to the audience and everything. Um, uh, but then there's other people who are like, uh, their strengths are other places. Like they have right. really good, um, characters and they have really good, uh, just that's, thinking that's part skills. of the fun of it too, right? Like, have you ever been on stage with another person who loves to be in, in charge in the lead? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, like... yeah, it is. Yeah. It becomes a power play. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's always in, in, in good natured fun. We always, right. um, uh, like Dave uh, constantly tries to throw me off my game, yeah. like while I'm trying to, you know, just like spew information to the audience. Um, he'll be like, you know, messing sure, with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brett's the same way. Um, but it's, you know, again, it's like we're trying to make the best show possible. Yeah, we're trying to make the best show possible, and um, uh, there is, there are parts of the thing. Oh my god, this <laughs> years ago there was this girl who worked for us, and she was great. She was great, but whenever she would come to the show, yeah. Like, just to bring her boyfriend to come to the show. She'd sit in the front row. And, like we say at the beginning of every show, we're like, everything that happens on this stage has never happened before and will never happen again. And that's the way we say it. Every single show, like, at least six times a week. And uh, she would make snarky comments about that. And she'd be going like, except that, <laughs> this speech is not made up. <laughs> like, like, like yes, but this is just information. And so, like, there's this whole thing of, like, there is information right. that we just have to give the audience. And it's just, it's by rote, and it's it's not scripted, but it's scripted. Like, right. I say the same things every single time. Um, everybody has their own way of doing it. Uh, but uh, trying to, like, power through that and make that part fun, too, when you're just trying to, blah, this is information you have to have to make this show the funnest for you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's fun, anyway. <laughs> it's all about energy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're doing that kind of stuff, when you're just viewing yeah. information. Yeah, and if we can keep it light during those times, and yeah, it's, it's cool too. I'm always interested to, to know, like, what what is the, the road ahead look like for you? I mean, I know we've talked, uh, but what, what's what's in for J-Star? Like, <laughs> an early do, you, do, you, do you have, <laughs> yeah, uh, because... It, 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 with the early early grave thing, you have an immense amount of energy. Now I don't know how, what time you actually get up. Um, it's probably not very early, but, <laughs> but like you have, and it's amazing to take. Be I'm taking classes right now uh, from J Star too, 
I recommend anybody in the Atlanta area come check it out. But um, you have this amazing passion for what you do. Yeah. And it seems like it's authentic. Like, you're not just like, oh, yeah. well, you paid for class, so I'm going to give you, you know, some bullshit. Like, here's yeah. some bullshit kind of thing. It's like yeah. you love doing it. And yeah. I was and talking I've, to Sherry about it. I was just, I don't understand. Like, if somebody was staying after asking me questions, I'd be like, look, man. I gotta <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, because improv changed my life. Yeah. Like, the class I took with Tommy Fudge at Laughing Matters changed my life. I go all over the world now teaching improv, performing improv. Um, last week in Belgium, a f- an improv format that I created um, uh, called Motel yeah. uh, was being performed wow. by some of the greatest improvisers from America and from uh, Europe. Uh, and it's like, it's so in- incredible. Like there's, there's I think six countries now that are performing this format that I created called wow. Motel. And that kind of thing is just like, oh my God, that that's happening in Europe and Canada. Yeah. And I'm not even there. Like this thing, you know, like, <laughs> She's and, not doing and I just go back to like, I took this class from Tommy Fudge and now all these people are affected by it. You know, yeah. like, um, I have the, uh, the, the incredible honor. Uh, I taught the very first improv classes in Nepal. Wow. So, um, and I performed in and directed the very first improv show, uh, uh, in Nepal. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Like, uh, and it's all because I took a class. Because I, you know, I put acting comedy class <laughs> into a search engine and and it. said yes to it. Like it was just, um, and it was all it was all meant to be, and it all played out the right the right way. You know, yeah. even though you know back when they were on my show, I didn't get it then. Then uh, there was whose lines anyway. I didn't get it then. You know, this yeah. guy came and told me all about UCB. Didn't get it then. Yeah. But then I got it in 2001, and it was like, this is the time, and then all this happened, and now here we are. I mean, I wouldn't know you without yeah. that one class, and it's just like, ugh, um, I want that for other people, because it's changed my life, um, just my, my personal life, like, um, everything, you yeah. know? I mean, I, I would never have believed, even when I started the theater, I would not have believed that I could go on a like a three-month tour of uh, Europe and Asia to, to teach improv, like, yeah. you know, and... I sit back sometimes and say, holy shit. Yeah, I do. Uh, every single day. I'm just like, my God, how, how does this happen? You know, like, uh, it's so cool. It's just, I mean, it's just dominoes. And yeah. I hope that people from here, um, you know, go on to do things. Like, uh, one of my old uh, cast members here um, is on the show special, now wow. and uh it's so weird and funny i'm just like oh my god like <laughs> yeah. it's it, it's like it's almost like your entire life has been an improvised scene that you've just like killed <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you've been killing it <laughs> <We're still laughs> like, trying to kill it like you've been doing uh, because it, i mean would you say this has been playing like did not you at, all. Playing this and that, at all that's amazing that's, right okay that's revelation number two uh we do this on the show. It's amazing, we amazing. You should be interviewed by this guy. You'll learn stuff about your life. She was. She was the first interview. Who? Oh, There's nobody the there. There's no. nobody there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to you, home viewer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you see that uh, one on your computer? And I, I see so often now, like, kids in high school just have this plan. Like, I mean, in sixth grade, they, like, know... Yeah what they're going to do and they're like I'm working towards this college and I need these credits and I'm going to do this job people are always asking right like what are you going to be when you grow up yeah and I hate that question I hate that question now like um, somebody put on Facebook the other day um, what are some uh, questions to ask on a first date and uh, I do think about this a lot because are you a rapist yeah that's a good one (laughs) (laughs) will you drink this without question Uh, (laughs) wait I forgot to (laughs) yeah (laughs) delicious Uh, uh but I was like, uh, ask like, what your greatest accomplishment is. Like, ask um, what you're most proud of. Ask like, uh, you know, how you um, affect the world. Like, just not like, what do you, what do, you do? do? Like, it's so annoying because a lot of times people have a job, and I had a job. Um, I worked for my family at our um, U-Haul business nice. uh, for I think like the first five years of the basement, yeah. and I just kept like. Um, taking less and less hours as I could. And finally I was working Sunday afternoons for like four hours. And, uh, 
at that point it was just to help them right. uh, because they needed the shift covered. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't do it anymore because I was busy, you know, the other six days of the week and just didn't have the energy for uh, that anymore. So even starting the, the theater, I was still doing a crap job. And if anybody asked me, you know, what I did, I was right. like, I'm not going to say like, I, I, you know, rent U-Haul units, but, um, <laughs> because that's not what I did. That's not, you know, that wasn't the passion. Right. That was the thing I did to do this. The question you really know? is, how do you acquire money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, really, Who's it's paying like, you? It's really the, it's uh, really the question I, I wish, <laughs> wish someone would. Uh, yeah, um, it's, uh, mostly it's corporate. Um, right. uh, so like in, uh, like basically my week is, uh, Monday, Tuesdays, usually classes here. Um, Wednesdays we have other classes or shows. Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday we have shows. Uh, Sundays we do have some some shows, but Monday through Friday in the afternoons I usually have a corporate class to teach, and it pays more. Um, uh, and you know it's three hours or four hours and yeah. going to get paid. So uh, it's a bit like having a job, <laughs> <laughs> which took a long time for my mom to understand how it. How it worked. It's funny know. how now you're in corporate America <laughs> without having to actually be in corporate America, yeah. right? Like, how the hell does that happen? <clears throat> yeah. And, it, like, when I worked in, in New York, I was working in the magazine industry. Uh, and now on the other side of that, <clears throat> I know the problems that need to be solved. I know right. how people work together and um, stuff. Um I want to do a magic trick for you. Can I do a magic trick yeah, for you? Yeah, man. Okay, awesome. Um, I feel like we've been here for a while. So I'm just a little bit thirsty. So, no, I was going to, okay, so, okay, I'm just going to do it, okay, but just watch my hands, watch my hands. Okay. Okay, here we go. There we go. Whoa! I know, I know. You want to try it? You want to try my it? God. You want to try it? I can do this. Just hold your hands out. Just hold your hands out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to do that. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Damn okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Oh. I know. It's cool. Yeah. You viewers at home should be really impressed. So this is actually As how... we mentioned, nobody else is in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually how you uh, have been having any success. You're, you're magical. It's true. It's true. I can see um, your horn forming. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. It, uh, it's cool, though, because like improv has taken me to all these places. I have met so many amazing people. Um, uh, but improv is like this human thing. Yeah. This thing that connects all humans. And uh, you know all the improv games that we play, uh, even like with the song title, song, um, I mean the singing, singing warm up, yeah. where you're just singing songs. Right. Uh, Hot seat. And we go around, like I go around to, to Europe and people, uh, eat, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but. Uh, singing songs in different languages. Yeah, singing yeah. songs in different languages and like that a different language song can inspire an American song yeah. um, or vice versa right. uh, or finding the songs that everybody knows together yeah. which weirdly um, when I first when I went on my first tour it was like four months um, and I was in uh, uh, it was all around Ireland uh, Sweden and Norway and uh, <laughs> the song that everyone came up with that everyone knew yeah. in all these places was It's Raining Men by the Weather Girls yeah. Because it's a great song. It's a great song. Like, <laughs> but it's like, what? It was like a one-hit wonder here. Like, yeah. you know, but everybody. <laughs> and then when I started touring Europe and then going further into like, uh, like I go to Istanbul a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, and then Nepal, uh, India. They all know this stupid <laughs> song. Like, it's rain and men. And uh, in, when I was in Turkey the first time and this song came up, I couldn't believe it. I was like, here I am. You know, on the Asian side of Istanbul, and this freaking song comes up, and uh, you know that song is actually about World War Two. It is not. It's about a lot of dead bodies, man. Okay, now <laughs> see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna school Matthew here for a second. <laughs> it's uh, it is about um, uh, uh, getting dates. It's a gay anthem. What? It's raining men. Hallelujah. It's raining men. I'm going to go out and get myself absolutely soaking wet. I want a tall, blonde, strong, and lean. Yeah. It's, no it's a gay anthem. It's about going out and getting hot dates. 
And you want to go to a club where it's raining I men. I thought it was about World War II. No, nope, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but in Istanbul, they didn't know what the song was about. They just knew it phonetically. And when I explained it to them, they were like, oh, huh. we have been singing gay song. Okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oops, I have done it again. <laughs> uh, I love you, Istanbul. Thanks for that, man. Um, uh, <laughs> That's fantastic. There's like four people who watch this uh, that speak Turkish, and I just freaked out that I just spoke Turkish to them. Most of my crowd is from... Uh, is it really a heavy yeah. Turkish crowd? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get a lot of messages I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all good. <laughs> right, they're, they're bars, of course. Could you guys start using emojis so I can understand you? No, don't. <laughs> no, no. Yes. Uh, don't, Never... Never read the comments. That's the that's the thing. No worry, I don't get it. It's so funny. <laughs> uh, we have amazing reviews on uh, Google and yeah. and like Yelp and stuff. Facebook. We have a uh, <laughs> we have the highest uh, rating of any theater in Atlanta. You're welcome. Absolutely. Um, it's why we chose. Uh, why I chose. Really? Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, it's funny. I never look at the ratings on stuff when I'm like going to places. I the real ask. reason why I chose you but was somebody because did. of the show. I came to the show. Came to the show. And I was yeah. like, holy. Shit. What's weird is we get people, and probably I think like probably more than half the people that are in your class, yeah. um, had never seen a show here before. They just mm-hmm. came here, and I'm always like, "Really? You like, you took a class without ever seeing these people perform? Like, you want to take a class from me without even knowing what I do?" What just blows my mind with any form of I mean, uh, <laughs> like money, like transaction, it's like you have no idea what the product looks like. Yeah. You go. Yeah, I mean, I know I did it, but I had some like connection to Laughing Matters from before. Right. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, take my money. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I had a thought and it just disappeared. I don't know what it was, but but I'm always I was always surprised by people who um, uh, just commentate the class without they just looked online. But anyway, um, the other day. <clears throat> I had an email. It was like, you have some new Google reviews. And I was like, oh, cool. I can usually just delete all that stuff. And um, uh, I, re- <laughs> it was, I read a couple, but then all of a sudden I see this one and it was like, I read the thing. It's like, oh, we had the best time. Such a fun show. Great cast. We're coming back, bringing all of our friends. Three stars. <laughs> and I was just like, like what? Wait, what? No, you're, yeah. you're wrong. <laughs> and it's- like, I mean, most people give us five stars. You're welcome. But, uh, it's just so weird when some people don't. Yeah, like uh, I so. have, I've had that with writing with my books. Oh yeah, like a three star. This book touched me. I felt like I wasn't alone anymore. Three stars. Yeah, it's like I think wait, they, <laughs> what uh, are you talking about? These people have only been to fancy restaurants and they only know the Michelin rating, right? Which the Michelin is three stars is the highest you can get. So yeah. maybe that's what they're thinking. Yeah, right. They don't understand ratings. No, they don't get it. They don't get it. It's uh, it, <laughs> it's cool though to have these people um, in class. And to see them start to open up. Like, yeah. I've always been a weird guy. I've always been really open and, and kind of out there. And it sounds like, obviously, you have too since you're 9 or 10 years old in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah. But to see well, people, I wasn't out there. I was down you there. You were down there. I was in. But you were still, you were so weird. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> people could hear it from the streets. Yeah, they probably could. That's <laughs> <laughs> some weird kid in the basement. Pardon me, miss. I have a problem. Lost <laughs> my glove <laughs> and I could use your light. Right. But, but one of the greatest things is that you talk about the human connection. Like, oh, yeah. what you do is making people feel so comfortable. People who are like such introverts naturally yeah. and who don't speak out normally or even say funny things, it seems like, yeah. are, are like hating it in class and they're coming out of nowhere with this stuff and it's just like cracking you up. It's the cool, it's got to be like the coolest feeling, right? Yeah. I, I, I think, I, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope that like everyone, like, we always talk it's like I don't know sometimes it's it feels like a bullshit phrase but like this is a safe space you can do whatever yeah. here you know because it happens <laughs> in a lot of acting classes and stuff but nobody ever really feels that like that safe but when you see somebody who is like super timid yeah. um, so this is a good case uh, uh, for this um, I started a program um, one of our players had uh, has an autistic son mm-hmm. and uh, he would come to the shows and love the shows uh, from the time he was like 12 and uh, he just loved shows. And so that inspired him to get involved with the theater program at his uh, school. Mm-hmm. Well, he's autistic. Something happened. He had a meltdown. The teacher freaked out. Mm-hmm. And the teacher basically said, he can't come to theater class anymore because I can't deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, ugh, sucks. So his grandmother uh, came to me and said, you know, told me that all this had happened and said, do you think 
that you could create a program for people like him and his friends who are in this, you know, yeah. similar situation. And I was like, and she was like, do you think improv would help? Do you know anything about it? I looked online, couldn't find anything about improv for autism or, you know, anything. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, probably it helps everybody else. Like, you know, so we put together a thing and, um, uh, we had, uh, these classes, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting choked up. Uh, <laughs> we started these classes and, uh, it was amazing. And at first I like watered down what I would do, uh, with, uh, my regular classes. <clears throat> but the more I did it, I realized, no, you, they, they, they just want the whole thing. They want yeah. the whole thing. Um, the, the coolest thing about uh, most autistic people, people on the spectrum, is that you can just be direct with them, which is the point of improv. Right. Like, to just <laughs> say the thing. They already get and it. And then right? they react. Yeah, yeah. They, they've got it. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's so refreshing to just be able to tell somebody yeah. without worrying about feelings or manners or whatever, just like, you need to stop doing this because of this. Um, and this was a program for teens, and what I was interested in, like later, was finding teens act out. Like so, I was having to figure out what's the behavior that's spectrum behavior, yeah. and what's the teen behavior. Right. Because the teen behavior, I can be like, stop your bullshit. Right. The spectrum behavior, they can't stop that bullshit. I get it. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a little different. <clears throat> but so many people just lump it all together, right. and so they're not ever treated. Like a teenager, you know, not in, in uh, so I'm like was very blunt and very direct with these people. Anyway, this is not the story I wanted to tell, um, but just to give you a little background of that. So doing it for people on the spectrum, I, again, opened up this whole new area. I was like, oh my god, it really is this panacea that just yeah. cures every ill. Yeah. Um, uh, we had a kid. Mother emails us says he's nonverbal. Um, he'll probably not want to participate. Uh, he'll probably want to just like stand in the corner yeah. and whatever. Um, and uh, we're like, that's cool. He came, and I was just like, you know what? Do what you want. We're going to start with this circle of games. And he sat off to the side. And then by like the end of the games, he came. Should we lock that? Should we restart? Yeah. Hello. Just, cool. So uh, this kid comes to class, and uh, he... Basically, you know, a lot of spectral people won't make eye contact, and you know how big that is for me. Like, look me in the eyes! Um, <laughs> which I had to adjust for autism classes. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, you know what? You do you. And he stood in the corner. Um, about halfway through the, the first round of, like, circle warm-ups with everybody, yeah. he stepped into the circle, and he never said anything when it was time to say something, but... You could just, I could just feel like he, he was on it. Like he knew what was on it. Um, and then by the end, uh, he was, he was, he didn't do any scenes, but he would sit off to the side and he was like mumbling to himself. Hmm. Like I could see just, he would just mumble things. And occasionally I heard him say stuff and I was like, oh, that is the exact right thing that should have been said right there. Like, yeah. you know, um, <clears throat> we get an email the next day. The mother says, at dinner, I'm going to cry. Uh, at dinner, uh, they normally would say like, "How was your day?" And he would say, "Fine," and that would be the end of it. Yeah. He recounted every minute of the hour-long class for an hour. Wow. Over dinner, he told them every single thing that happened, and she told me like a few things. Like in this email, she was like, "He mentioned this. He mentioned this. He mentioned this. He mentioned this," and uh, he got all of it. And wow. then, uh, of course, he came to class the next week. He was in the circle doing the warm-ups. He was out there speaking and everything. And I was just like, holy God, one, one class, one hour of class wow. um, already did it. You know? It's crazy. That's amazing. I locked the door so they couldn't come in. <laughs> we got a class about it. It's okay. You can leave it going. Yeah. Leave it going. We got a class about to come up. Um, yep. And it's, that's amazing, right? What is life if it's not human connection, oh, relationship? Right, exactly. Right? And you said, what's next for me? Yeah, what's um, next? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, I... Got some I, spooky stuff coming up. It's, it's true. In my other life, I have, a, I have a whole different life where I'm opening a haunted house. But um, uh, I did my first um, voiceover uh, reading um, uh, reading a, a, ser a novel of series. Uh, this is why I'm good at voiceover. Because I can say words good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a it's a, it's a, a series of novels, mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> they cast me to this character, yeah. um, 
and evidently I did it good. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, they, I, the author sent a note back after the producers sent them yeah. my uh, um, first recordings, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Oh my God, this guy gets it. He's amazing." Like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, Grr. "So um, that's what I'm looking for," because I know, like, uh, a I'm on borrowed time. I first of all thought I was going to be dead by 40 nice. um, for just whatever reason. Not even like a morbid reason. Just I was like, you know, I just felt like I'm <laughs> going to burn out. Yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm just living on borrowed time. Um, but I know like, uh, you know, in the future, like I want to be able to do things less active and not like, right. you know, teach uh, standing on my feet for right. four hours a night. Um, so you can so, sit in a booth and be like. Exactly. I sat there for three hours uh, just sucks. using my voice and yeah. it was amazing. It was so fun. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, that's awesome. That's the the next step. And it's again, it's like fun acting, you know, like. And that yeah. just kind of came out of. Came out of a, a birthday text I sent to somebody. Amazing. It was just like I hadn't so, seen her in a while, and she was like, uh, "What are you up to?" And like I told her, and she, I was like, "What are you up to?" And she said, "I'm doing voiceover stuff and blah blah blah." Hey, I've got something, you know, like crazy. So we'll wrap it up because we yep. got class about to start, um, and I, I want to thank you so much for your time. Oh my god, thank you for. Awesome. Asking me. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, I just want you to, if you can, just speak real quick mm-hmm. about, because like I said, it seems like your life is just kind of happening and you're just like nailing it, nailing it. What, what kind of advice? Well, you, I, in a, yeah. I mean, you're doing stuff that other people dream about doing, right? Mm-hmm. What would you say to people who are like, I just don't know where to go with my life? Right. Well, I, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know what, they're doing with their life. They like. I think people have a dream, mm-hmm. but I think sometimes they think it's too weird to chase or whatever. Um, whatever your dream is, get involved with it. You can't expect. Like I said, I had a job for five years yeah. while I was opening the basement, so it overlapped. Right. Um, but the, the job, the gross job, kept me being able to do the awesome thing. Um, a lot of people try to skip that step and they don't have to like, you know, pay their dues or whatever. Yeah. Um, and and you can't worry about starting at the bottom. This happens in Atlanta all the time. People call me and they're like, I've taken classes at all these places. Um, can I take your classes? Uh, can I start at, you know, level five? Like, well, no, because you have to learn how we do it. Right. Um, even though improv is this worldwide thing, but there's certain things that we do a certain way, certain things that other people do. Whatever. And it's the same way everywhere. Be willing to take an improv one class. Be right. willing to start at the bottom and just do it. Just just put in the work and just uh, put yourself out there. And whatever it is, like, you know, if you like art, go volunteer at a gallery. Go to gallery shows all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, buy paint. And I was thinking about this last night. <clears throat> um, the one thing you can always get more of, and it's been true my whole life, you can always get more money. Yeah. So you cannot worry about the cost of things. Like if something comes up, you have to say yes and yeah. because it will never come again. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, New York tomorrow for a, a Broadway trip and I'm seeing a couple shows that are, uh, I'm doing this trip now because a couple shows are closing. Like, I know there will never be the chance to see this again. Yeah. And yes, it costs some money, but the experience right. will outweigh that because I'll have money again. I've yeah. wasted money in the past on stuff yeah. <laughs> and I'm here and I have money again. Like, you can always find money for stuff take the class do the thing spend the money on things that you love you know but also do the shit job right. to afford yourself to do that to do like don't think that you know you can just walk on to Johnny Carson you can't because he doesn't exist anymore he's dead he's dead, <laughs> he's dead. Uh, but yeah uh, yeah but just follow your dreams like go out there and whatever you're interested in yeah just go to it and say yes yes and it'll change your life beautiful J-Star, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, my God. That's amazing. This has been fantastic. Super fun. Everyone, go to thebasementtheater.com. Check out all the amazing shows they have. J-Star is doing all kinds of crazy stuff. He's got a haunted house opening up here in Atlanta soon. What? (laughs) So uh, be on the lookout for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.